Come on, who of you in the comment section thinks this is going to fail within the first 10 seconds? Hey folks, welcome back to the Big Barn Build. It's the end of the day, I've got a beer, but it's the start of the video. Uh, that's because all sorts has been going on around here and I will catch you up with it very briefly now before we do some much needed laser work. Right, put my beer there, don't let me forget. We're losing light, I know. Most exciting thing is we've got a mix. So we've got sand, we've got blocks, we've got cement. That means only one thing. We're laying blocks and we've got progress. Join me in the kitchen. Uh, we've got our first bit of block work. So this is not up to DPC yet. We've still got another 300 mil to come up. But you can see here, we've got a first cavity. So this is giving us our 300 mil wide wall which is what our timber frame sits on. We've actually got another whole leaf of block work outside that, which is will become brick um, above. Down in there, there's a lintel, a load of commons above. So this is actually where we're gonna run drainage through in the future. There's insulation to go in, there's ties, there's all sorts of going on. And what we will do is I'll give you a bit more info on how that's gonna work uh, in the future. A brick, 10 mil and a block. So what are we, 65, 75, and then 215. So that is, it's too late at night, isn't it? We've had a beer, 215. Ah, oh, so I'm missing something. Oh no, there's, there's two, there's mortar under that, and above it is 300. Perfect, so 300 above that course is our finished floor level. I'll measure up, put a mark, get the laser on there, and then the whole lot will be that because before we were working from a different datum we have measuring up and down from that point if we just have a line and it says ffl everyone knows that's finished floor height we can do everything we want from there well, and in a minute i'll give you a very quick brief look at what else we've been up to today because tom and i've been getting ready for uh, an 8 a.m concrete pour tomorrow should be bang on everywhere what i might do just check where we are above there. It's amazing how high the floor looks because we're in, we're in the ground, but the floor level's up here. Oh. Right, I don't imagine you saw much of what was going on there. But the nice thing is we've now got this perfect line on every single steel around the building. And that is our finished floor level, done and dusted. Now, I'll probably have to refilm this in the morning, but I'll quickly show you what the plan of action is for 8 a.m. Uh, we've got about two hours of prep tomorrow to do first, so. so all right, we are all set up with the dumper this morning. We can give you a better look at What's going on? About five, ten minutes before truck arrives. We're going to wet this down, I think. Just a bucket of water just to lube it up a bit. And then it can all rock it down there. That's the plan, at least. Tom's made up our OSB sheet on legs, so that's ready at the other end for the chute that goes down into the long trench. And then if we do have any left over, which I don't think we will, but if we do, then we've got that little strip under the patio doors. All right, truck number, what are we on for? I think truck four. Truck number four is here. Dumper mark three is here. And hopefully it's gonna be fairly loose so we can slide him down the slip and slide into that end trench. All right, Laurie's here, but come on. Who of you in the comment section thinks this is going to fail within the first 10 seconds? Or which of you thinks it's got a chance? Yeah, if it'd be like that first mix, it would have just gone, wouldn't it? Yeah. You want to put it still in now and then. Yeah, go on then.
Right, I thought it was about time I gave you a bit of a site update because quite a lot's been going on the last 48 hours and it's time I filled you in. So we've managed to get the cherry picker moved out because the scaffold has left it right bang slap in the middle of where we needed to concrete. So that's done with until the netting needs to go back up. So it's been off hired, it's gonna get collected, but for now we just needed it there. Luckily next door has a cherry picker and he came and moved it for me because there's dual controls and there's a dead man's switch, a dead man's pedal and something or other. It's like doing the Macarena. You have to do about three things at once to get it to move. So that's out of the way. Asbestos bin hopefully going tomorrow. But the concrete was a moderate success. Now we went for an S, is it S3? The regular sort of slump for all of these fills. And uh, the, the first job was to try and shoot it down the corrugated tin that we had remember that was down here and it might have looked fairly successful on camera but it was just too chunky well too too uh, thick and we should have probably got a slightly looser mix and then it would have been able to get all the way down there without too much effort you can see we threw in a load of OSB at the end just to make sure we weren't going to lose too much it's much wider than needed because we've already re we've retained this block wall and there's another bit of concrete on the inside of that. However, it steps down two blocks and it's okay, but that was a bit of a workout. Idea was to try and get that done and all the way along the back. And our concrete estimating is, well, I'll show you what we did with the excess, but we were, we had more than we needed to. So we've now got our trench filled all the way down the back here. Finished floor height is up here. Uh, I think it's eight blocks to get up there. So a fair bit. And we've started stacking everything out. So we've got Morgan here. He's going to be laying away in the background. Um, not necessarily going to be a feature on camera, uh, but serious progress going on. I'll show you in a bit. Um, we've got three leaves of wall to go up because we've got our internal cavity wall, which is going to finish at floor height with the thermal break and then it's our timber frame and then on the outside of that we've got to have another leaf which is going to support our brick facing and the cladding above that so all of those blocks are stacked out but we are just getting through i mean it's it's crazy because they go down pretty quick uh, but it's crazy how many blocks you get through you've really got to keep a keep a track of what's done anyway so we had extra concrete we actually managed Fortunately, we dug the patio trenches that come along here. It's just a narrow one that's gonna carry all the glazing. So we managed to fill those in, but there must've been about two cube left on the, on the truck. So very fortunately, 
we already had these either side of our sort of bridge. We had this one here and this one here. We were going to hold off pouring those until we'd basically our porch, our front door is set back a meter or so. So it goes, this footing needs to kind of go in like a horseshoe. Uh, we were going to pour it in one. Unfortunately, we can't do that now, but at least we had somewhere to put the concrete. So they're all, that's only a block lower than there, but it's the same as these two. So we just need to tie in the footing that goes around there. So it was a pretty full on uh, first half of the day yesterday. And then we had a big delivery come in. I say big delivery, it's just all the delivery is going to be big from now on, but uh, about eight packs of blocks, sand, cement, commons, all sorts. So we spent the last hour of yesterday just stacking stuff out just to make sure it's as efficient as possible for the lane. And, and it's going well. So all of that kitchen wall is da done now as far as we can until the thermo blocks turn up. They should be here Friday or Monday. And then the patio section will be finished today. And then it's on to that big one along the back. So there we go. Job now is to clear up the corner over there. Tom's having a bit of a dig around just to where, where this block work carries over the old footings. It's not necessarily always gonna line up with coursing because that'll be far too easy. Well, it's not pretty, uh, but we shut it in. So we've got a load of rebar stuck in there. There's some reinforced mesh that was already in this corner, so that's gonna help tie it in. And then when we bring the block work round, that'll be tied into the old as well. So let's see if a barrow load will get us. We need to be off this block here. That's a really unusual thing. Yeah, I know. All right, it's a Monday morning, we're back on site and I'm gonna do a patio. Well, I'm not gonna do a patio, but I'm gonna um, just spread out. Well, I've already started. Spread out some of this sandy, gravelly stuff. It's gonna be well below our finished surface. We're basically leveling this out with the rest of the floor, um, but I wanna get it all leveled because I can't get the digger over here once that little intermediate wall goes up. So spread this out, grade it, run it in as much as I can. We'll get a whacker plate over here at some point, but for now, just level. Right, we are fat filled on most of it. On the other side, so we're gonna bring up a bit of type one and get it in, then we'll get the digger out, and then we'll get the whacker out. So the plan is back for the cavity on each zone or each kind of bay and then do some type one compacting it kind of breaks up a bit rather than having 500 square meters of everything to do in each stage we'll just go through and we'll just know that we've done one side of the building once one side of the building's done and compacted it should be a lot easier to then get any lifting equipment the forklift or the scaffold tower or anything like that in when we start working on this roof and I think it's just better to do that and then once Morgan's finished around that side on the block work we can backfill those and then move across to there so we're just kind of working behind in a bit of a process you know block work goes in then we'll backfill then we'll get that tight one down then we've also got the thermo blocks just arrived so they'll be the inside course and then once we're happy then the sand blinding can go down but there's no point in putting the sand down for a good while yet.
It is one of the biggest wins so far on the build. It's having all this aggregate to use, um, I just can't even fathom how much money it would have cost to bring in Type 1. We've fortunately had a lot there to start with. So we're only kind of topping up and evening things out. But even so, we'd be, you know, several, several lorry loads to, to buy in otherwise. And yet we've got all of this. Most of this is, is pretty clean Type 1, but it's got a bit of soil and sand in it. So that's really primarily for the backfill. But for the sub base, we've got all that clean stuff we kept separate. Welcome back, the sun is out. And as a bit of an update, uh, we carried on yesterday afternoon, as you saw, and got all of the Type 1 into the kitchen. Uh, Patty was ready to compact, play compactor. Well, I don't know what to say. It's given up on me. This is my Audi Special I bought years ago, and it's been sat unused for three years. Uh, I'm guessing the fuel got quite stale, but I managed to drain all that out. So it's got fresh fuel. It's only ever seen three or four hours work. Um, everything else should be working. I've had the spark plug out, checked everything else, checked the fuels flow into there. Oil's all good. Air filter's fine. Not wanting to start. Anyway, well, we can't get on and do the compacting at this point. We can get on and do some other groundwork. So we're all oversight is that oversight is that the term i think it is uh which is getting in the type one and sub base for the pool so while i've been messing around with amateur mechanics uh tom is over the other side in our aggregates merchants uh collecting up all of that type one and starting to dump it into the pool now we've used we're, we're aiming for about 150 200 mil in here because we, we can we've over dug so we can now bring up the levels to suit so we're using some of the crushed concrete type one that we had for the first layer to bulk it out, get that compacted. And then we're just gonna have another dumper of the sort of more 30, 40 mil down stuff uh, on hold. So we can get this compacted in the first layer, then we'll tip that on and we'll end up with a better layer then. And then on top of that, we've got a massive structural slab, which is a pain because it's so much concrete. I think it's two, 250 might be 200 um, but we've got various walls being built off that so we now got to kind of build a ramp get the digger back down into the back cave well what a week and of course taking the roof off coincided with the sun deciding to finally come out so it's now an absolute scorcher but we're managing to get all of the type one in where it's needed the whacker plate sorted and there's plenty of compacting going on and the next week is a big one for us we've managed to get a tele handler out on hire we're going to be prepping all these seals painting the seals getting all the roof structure ready the new roof is now ordered so that's in production hopefully only a matter of weeks before that will be going on and of course we've got our mezzanine to go in so we've finally made our cut lifts ready for all the steel quotes and we'll be getting that ordered and then Dave's gonna come up and do all the fabrication so we can get all of those bolted up. We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see more behind the scenes, head over to Patreon. You can join us there or of course over on our Instagram account. But that's it, thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.